When it comes to horror movies, or any movie for that matter, do you like collecting horror props? Do you like seeing things that have given you nightmares from your favorite movies? We do. Which brings us to today's video. You see, our friends over at the prop store have a live auction coming up with some of the entertainment memorabilia of your dreams or nightmares. And they invited us up to take a look at it. You ready? Here we go. Now just a quick heads up before we get things started. The auction at the prop store is actually happening right now at the time of recording. So you can actually go on the prop store's website, find your favorite item and place a bid. And you never know, you might be going home with something that terrified you as a kid and now it can terrify you as an adult. The live auction is June 28th through June 30th. So be sure to check that out. All right, we got plenty of stuff to show you. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way. So let's get this started. Here are some of the things that you can bid on. This one here is an outfit from Bohemian Rhapsody. Right over here is the alien ship from Independence Day. Right across from that is the ship from Spaceballs. This giant head over here, you may know this from Ghostbusters. How about John Carpenter's The Thing? Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. And we have this over here. Now, Jessica, you got really excited about this. I can't stop smiling. This was Anthony Hopkins in Wolfman. Now, you were singing a song. What was it? I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. I would love to own you. I would love to take you home. I would love to take a lot of things home. Um, it's not in the budget. And we're just getting started. There's a whole we're other room. We're just getting started. There's a whole warehouse. To tell you a little bit about me while we're here, I am a big sci-fi nerd, so this whole row has me very excited. This is one of the animatronics from Men in Black 3. Critters from Critters 4. Oh, look how cute he is. This one, I almost hyperventilated. My heart dropped, I stopped, I stared at it and said, why do I imagine him coming out of soup? Have you placed it? Okay, I'll spoil it. This is the puppet from Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, when her spell goes wrong and she makes this kind of potluck dinner for Dan. And it comes out and it rips off her apron and yeah, she throws them down the garbage disposal. And not to leave out my friend here, this is from the first Men in Black. We ain't got no money. Oh, baby girl, what are you singing back there? I'm just lamenting that we can't take any of these home, but maybe you can. They definitely need to go to a loving home. I'm in love with this place. I, I just want to be here all day and stare at things. You ready to see some of the other stuff here? Now this is only a small portion of what is in the auction that people can bid on. But this room behind this curtain, there are some truly terrifying pieces. I took a sneak peek and I'm on pins and needles. All right, let's go in. Okay. I can't contain myself. I can't contain myself. This is so hard. I want to run to, you know how like when you, you're a little kid and they let you loose on the, the playground and you, you immediately go for one thing. My brain just scattered because there's so many points that I want to go to first. This is so hard to pick a first one. I know where we're going to start. The clown from Poltergeist. This thing has given me nightmares ever since I was a little kid. And I'm sure if you grew up in the 80s, did the same to you. Now, what's really cool about things like this, if you go to the prop store website for the auctions, they tell you a whole bunch of different things, details about it. Like this is screen used. Now, there's not many of them in existence. I know this for a fact. Also, you see the pink on the hat and the ruffles? In the movie, they were blue. 
and over time they faded to this, to this pink. But here's the thing, if you look closely, you can still see some of the blue on the fabric. Just look at how terrifying and menacing this guy is. Now remember I was talking about still seeing blue on the costume? If you look right here, right there at the tip of his hat, you can see some blue fabric. It's like the thread is blue, but the fabric itself is not. That's what faded the fabric. And here's a better shot of the blue thread on the cuff. Man, it's pretty wild. Now I want to point out something very unique about this piece. If you look very closely at his face, almost like a, a crooked clown smile, there's a crack that's been repaired. Now here's the thing. This doll in the movie Portergeist was thrown around like there's no tomorrow. And things happen. I mean, this was in the 80s. And here in the actual catalog, which is what Jessica's holding, look at this thing. This thing is massive. We need to get one of these. They go into great detail about the history of this. And it says over here in this little description area, 318 screen matched evil clown doll, Portergeist 1982, that it was repairs. The glue in the crack happened on set while they were making the movie. I believe that. Crazy, I've never seen it. This book is, is heavy, I mean, it's massive. It's very heavy. <laughs> there is just so much stuff to see. Let's take a look at what's in the display cases. These are all my babies. I'm sorry, you can't have any. There are eight shelves of some pretty awesome things. This is the first one. That plane right there is from Top Gun. That's the closet meter from the movie Elf and it lights up. Right next to that, we have some items from the Jurassic Park movies and these are from Sam Neill's personal collection. And then right next to that, does this guy look familiar? Gremlins 2, just to name a few. For all of you Nightmare Before Christmas fans, we got some dice that belong to one Oogie Boogie. We have Harry Potter stuff. This book right here is one of the, the very first pressings, if you will, complete with some of the errors. Uh, wand, wand, uh, wizard, wizard, like double words. Right next to this, we have a figment animatronic skin, I guess, if you will. You can see some of the armholes right there from Walt Disney World. And speaking of characters, recognize the one on the left? Looks a little like Matt Damon, doesn't he? Team America, World Police. And then right down here, a little small, so I'm gonna get a little close. We have the ID and badge of Axel from Beverly Hills Cop. And right next to that, the medallion from Pirates of the Caribbean. This shelf here has a few autographed items as well. This right here, it says Scarface on it. This is the script that belonged to Al Pacino, his personal script. Right next to that, we have nunchucks and a signed picture of Bruce Lee. You can see that down there, it says best wishes. Bruce Lee, and if I back up here, that Fabergé egg is from Octopussy, James Bond. The prop weapon, Raiders of the Lost Ark, some Indiana Jones. We got Shawshank Redemption. This baseball glove over here is signed by Kevin Costner. This is from Field of Dreams. There's even some pictures right there. And then the dude abides right over here. Some big Lebowski stuff. I'm not going to lie, baby girl. I'm so tempted to stop this video, take this board game off the shelf, put it in the center of the room, and play. Now, why is that? Tell the viewers what they're looking at. This is the board game from Jumanji. I have so many questions about this because with screen use, I'm really curious if there's magnets underneath that make the pieces move. Right? It is so beautiful to see it in person. You kind of got to stare at it for just a second, but... Moving on, we have the license plate from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We have a bat and baseball from the movie... The Natural. The Natural. I can't ever remember that one. I don't know why. I want to do this one next. This is the helmet from Monty Python, the Holy Grail. And I saved this little gem for last. I'm not going to touch it, but this baby right here... This was a screen used lunch pail from the tree in Return to Oz when Dorothy arrives in Oz after the flood. There really is just so much to look at. Fedora on the left, 
might look familiar. Freddy vs. Jason, it's Freddy Krueger's hat. We got the claw from The Final Nightmare. Over here is something that I've never seen before. This is very interesting. It is a scarecrow ghost mask from Scream 4 that was never used. Right next to that, we have Kane Hodder's mask from New Blood. I kind of want to put that thing on. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to put it on. And then right over here, we have an original gremlin from Joe Dante's personal collection. And speaking of gremlins, I almost forgot this guy over here from Gremlins 2, the new batch. Man, I love the eyes. Again, from Dante's personal collection. Gotta have it. It's got the strings and everything. You see him up here? Man, that's cool. Looks like we got some baddies from our favorite horror movies. This one here is from Halloween H2O. We have a bat with some barbed wire, which is from The Walking Dead, that's Lucille. This right here is from the movie Signs. And then right over here below the original gremlin is a, a sword dagger from Lord of the Rings. This is a rather small shelf, so we're gonna tackle it like this. We got Wolverine's claws, we have a sword from Blade, the very first Blade, the Warhammer on the right that belonged to Jane Foster in Thor, Love and Thunder. And then right there in the center is a hero mask from Guardians of the Galaxy. And what I mean by hero mask is this. It was actually worn by the actor in the movie, screen used. So Chris Pratt actually wore this on his head. Hero mask number three. On the far left, we have some items from Wonder Woman, including the Lasso of Truth. Right there in the center, Edward Scissorhands is Scissorhands. We have an exploding Billy the Puppet Head from Saw 4. And then the good guy doll in the end is Cult of Chucky. It's screen matched. Aside from the props, they also have some awesome wardrobe pieces. This right here, the first one, is a screen used robe from Karate Kid Part 2 that was worn by Daniel LaRusso. Right next to that, we have a screen used, screen worn coat that was worn by Rose from Titanic. You can see it as the ship is sinking. Right next to that, we have Harrison Ford's outfit, one of his outfits from Blade Runner. Jessica, you love this movie, Prometheus. Now what's really cool about this, if you were to get inside this suit, they have screens that light up at the top and the whole thing just kind of lights up. If you saw the movie, you know what I mean. I you can't wear it. it. No. <laughs> I want to so bad. <laughs> they wouldn't let us play the, the um, the Jumanji game, they're not going to let us put on costumes. That's fair. This is from Shawshank Redemption, worn by Morgan Freeman. Look at those legs. Right? It's tall. This dress over here, as soon as we came in, you saw it and you're like, wow, that's pretty. It's from the other Boylan girl. You want to wear that one? That's a no. That that's one looks no. itchy. <laughs> this one looks a little itchy, but yeah. I believe this was worn by Natalie Portman, so that's really cool. And then right over here in the corner, Got a couple different things. I got to back up for this. So you know the movie Troy, right? Brad Pitt. Troy. Mm -hmm. So the items, the two weapons as the in the shield, were Brad Pitt's in the movie, and then the armor in the back. Let's get closer and look at this. This was worn by Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Gladiator. All right, baby goal. What did you find over here in the corner? Marshmallow Man. I, I can see that. <laughs> Some Ghostbuster stuff. Yes. yes? So yes. tell us a little bit about this. The red tie here and the head from 1984, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. The proton pack and the costume and the other tools are from the all-female cast from the 2016 Ghostbusters. Nice. Yeah. We wish we could put it on. <laughs> what else we got here? What's behind you? This is from Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets. This is Daniel Radcliffe, you'll see his glasses, his wand, and the Gryffindor badge on his cloak here. This is pretty much him towards the end of the film. He was very dirty, he bled a little bit, he uh, basically got muddy down in the Chamber of Secrets. Now we were just talking about that usually whenever you see things like this, they're not worn or, or muddied like this, and mm -hmm. this is actually kind of rare. I would think when you find a basilisk and you get stabbed with basilisk venom you might end up a little dirty a little dirty i forgive it it's forgivable yeah he's alive that's what counts 
Now, everything that we've seen is beyond amazing. And the entertainment memorabilia live auction book, the catalog that they have here, is thick. Now, it reminds me, now, Baby Gold, whenever you were a kid, I don't know if you experienced this, but my grandmother, every Christmas, she would say, what do you want for Christmas? And she would hand me and my sister this giant catalog book from like Sears. Sears. Catalog. Circle what you want. The funny thing is, we never got anything from that. I think it was just an activity. <laughs> right? It was something to just yeah. kind of get you out of her hair. Instead, we would get these, like a sweater that was like wrapped in uh, the mall boxes. You know, like mm -hmm. the little breakdown things? I do. That's what this reminds remember me that, of. Yeah. Like, show the thickness of that. It is a very thick, very heavy book. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down and show you what's behind it. Yeah. So this white dress that you see, this is like the creme de la creme, if you will, about this auction. It is Princess Leia's, Carrie Fisher's, screen-matched ceremonial dress, and they have their own booklet for it. Now, before we get up close with the, the dress, here is the, the scene. You know it. If you're a Star Wars fan, yeah. yeah. And they were saying what? That it's estimated, like what, one to two million? One to two million is the estimate for it, yeah. I'm gonna put an ad in for like, like a, like a bid in for, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the bid, 99 cents. I like this one where she's smiling. <laughs> right? So this dress that she's wearing in that is right here, the actual dress. Now I was just joking about the bid of 99 cents. That's, I don't mean any disrespect. If I had $2 million, $5 million, $10 million, I would buy it for that. Because this is just gorgeous. Look at it. Screen matched, screen worn. You can see some wear on it. There's something else. It is so difficult to stand here and not take his outstretched hand. If you're not familiar with the character, you might be familiar with his face a little bit. This is Robin Williams as the Bicentennial Man, and it, it shares his likeness even as a robot, which is very endearing. And that's the wonders of the pieces you have here. And there's so many sci-fi pieces. It's hard to contain myself. And this one alone, we have Matrix, we have Back to the Future, we have Star Wars and Star Trek. Next to that, an original Hildebrandt. Even this one has a special place in my heart because I grew up in comic books in the 80s and 90s and that's how I became familiar with Hildebrandt. So to be just in the room with an original Hildebrandt, I never thought that would happen in my lifetime. Same thing goes for what's behind me. I can't keep my cool, I just can't. This is the Batman collection. Catwoman and Batman are from Batman Returns. Harvey Dent as Two-Face is from Batman Forever. I back up a little bit. You can really take in that suit. Look at that. I think one of my personal favorites here is this chair that belonged to Estelle Getty from Golden Girls. And there's a script there, it looks like. It says, Final Draft, November 20th, 1985. It's signed by the girls themselves. The go I still watch the Golden Girls. Like, before we go to bed, you know, while you're going to sleep, you have to have something on in the TV. And you ready for it? Grim Life Collective, Mr. Grim, me, I have Golden Girl pajamas. Yeah, so there's that. The amount of items inside this auction completely blows my mind. So many awesome things to say, and I keep coming back to this thing because of the nightmares that it gave me. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of still gives me nightmares. He freaks me out. So, I'm not gonna lie. If we had him in our house, we would never have him in my house. <laughs> With that being said, thank you for joining us for another Grim Adventure, this time from once again from the prop store, taking a look, a little like peek into the auction that they have going on right now. They have auctions all the time. You gotta check them out, follow them on their social media. We do. We want to own everything. Movie magic and movie history. I want him in our house. We want to play uh, the Jumanji board game. You want to wear the Catwoman uh, mask. Whew. This is like Disneyland for movie nerds. I can't believe how many swords I identified today. Just today. I identified at least six swords. Until next time, happy Halloween. Remember, I
Never stays a day. A bad luck's always a common. 